Welcome to Coco's 2D Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Eulen. For more information, go to bobeulen.com slash cocos2d. This tutorial is called Advanced Collision Detection. Right now I'm sitting in a hotel room in Spain and it's raining cats and dogs outside. I only have my laptop with me, so the quality of the sound will not be the best. I was looking at the documentation of CGPOT reference when I stumbled on this function. CGPOT contains point. The function checks whether a point is contained in a path. This could be useful, I thought, for advanced collision detection. The idea is that we have two bodies, each one described by a CG path. For instance, we have a blue body here described by the three corner points, and the red body described by five corner points. We can add the midpoints to the blue body, doubling the number of points on its path. And we can repeat that process until we have enough points. Then we could check if two bodies collide by checking if any of the green points or within the path of the red body. For instance, this point is inside the path, so we would detect that as a collision. Observe that we also get information about where exactly the bodies collide. Let's go to Xcode and see how we can explore this idea. We are inside Xcode and our task is to create a ship and a rock. The rock is able to move and rotate as the user chooses. And when the rock collides with the ship, a sound is heard and the point where the rock hits the ship is logged in the console. And our plan is to implement both the ship and the rock as actor objects. And an actor object will have a sprite, a point array, and the corresponding CG path. Then we will use the function CG path contains point to determine when the rock path contains one of the points along the path of the ship. Let's look at our starting point. We have an image of a ship. We have an image of a rock and we have an image of a point called blob.png. We also have a sound called hit.mp3 which sounds like this. We also have some images that we will later use to move and rotate the rock. Here they are. There are six of them. Rotate counterclockwise, rotate clockwise, move down, move left, move right, and move up. We also have three classes Hello World Layer, Actor, and the Ship. In the interface file of the Hello World layer, we have an instance variable called ship. In the implementation file, in the init method, we are creating the ship and passing on the name of the sprite, the position, maximum gap between points along the CG path, and the pointer to the Hello World layer. Let's find this init with method in the ship class. 
If we look at the ship.h, we do not see it there. But we notice that ship is a subclass of the actor class. And if we look in the actor.h, we see that the initWith method is declared here. We also see that the actor defines some instance variables. A pointer to a layer, a pointer to a sprite, a pointer to a pointer array, and a pointer to a CG path. If we go to the implementation file, to the initWith method, we begin by adding the points to the pointer array. And that method is found in the subclass, since each subclass will have unique points. Here are the points of the ship. There are three points, defining the three corners of the ship. Then, using these points, we create the CG path. Then we set the layer variable and then we create the sprite. Give it a position, an opacity and then adding it to the layer. Let's run this. There we have the ship. And although we have defined the path and the corner points, we don't see them. Let's add a method that will help us to see the points. Stop. Paste some code. Here is the method for showing the points. Let's call that method from initWith. Paste some code. We will use it in the following way. If the given gap is positive, we will show the points, otherwise we will not show them. In the case of our ship, the gap is 20, so we will show the points. The reason for using this check is that later, when we add the rock, we do not want to show the points. And in that case, we will use a negative gap. But for the ship, this method will be called. So let's run this. And there you have the points defining the path. But still, the distance between the neighboring points is 70 pixels or something like that. A far cry from the maximum of 20 pixels that we want to allow. So, we will need to add some methods. Stop. Paste some code. We are calling a method called fillGaps, with the gap as the parameter. Let's add that method. Paste some code. And here we have it. Fill gaps. And this method calls the maxDist function, which returns the maximum distance between neighboring points. And also the double points method, that doubles the number of points by adding a midpoint between any two neighboring points. And we keep on doing that until the max distance is less than the given gap. So, let's run this and see how it works. And there you have the points running along the path. And the distance is less than the allowed gap of 20 pixels. Now we are done with the ship. Let's add the rock. Stop. To do that, we need to create a new class. We'll call it rock. 
we will treat it in the same way as the ship. So let's go to Hello World layer. Let's declare it here. Clause rock. And also as an instance variable. And in the implementation file, treat it just like the ship. Import rock.h and also in the init method we will create and initialize it with rock.png a position a negative gap since we are not interested to show its points. Let's also change rock.h Paste some code. The rock class will be the same as the ship, apart from having a method called isCollision, which will check if the ship is colliding with the rock. Also change the implementation file. Paste some code. Here we are adding the points. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five points. And also we have the is collision method, which goes through all the points of the ship, taking the location of a point, converting it to world space, and then converting it to the node space of the rock and then checking if the location is within the path of the rock. And if so, we return the number of the point in question. Otherwise, if there is no collision, we return minus one. Let's run this. And there you have the rock. And in order to test the collision, we need some buttons to move and rotate the rock. Stop. Go to the Hello World layer. We will add two constants. This is how many pixels we are translating the rock. And this is the number of degrees we are rotating the rock. Let's go to the init method and paste some code. Here we are calling a method that will add the navigation buttons. And here we are preloading the sound. Let's now add this add nav buttons. Paste some code. Here are the navigation buttons. And as you can see, each has an associated selector method. If we go to one of the selector methods, for instance this one, we see that we are moving the rock and then that we are checking if there is any collision. And that applies to all other selectors. If we look at the check collision method, we are sending the message is collision to the rock with the ship as the parameter. And we store the return value into the heat variable. The is collision method returns the integer identifying the point if there is any collision. Otherwise, it will return minus one. So, if there is a hit, we play a sound and we write the number of the hit in the console. As the last step, we are importing the simple audio engine so we can play the sound. 
So, let's run this. And here are the navigation buttons. If we move to the right, we get hit equals 4. The points are starting from the lower left corner going clockwise. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's move and rotate the rock. And as you can see, it works. So, we have now a very precise way of checking the collision. Thank you for watching.